Hi everyone, welcome to the Pace Studio in New York City. Happy Friday, happy almost Halloween. We are here with TJ Kong and the Atomic Bomb. Thank you guys so much for being here with us. Thank you. Um, you've got a new album out, it's called Dancing Out the Door. It came out two weeks ago uh, via Good Behavior Records. And um, as I understand, we're gonna hear a few songs from that record, yeah? Indeed. Cool, what's the first one you're gonna play for us? Uh, so this is called uh, John Wilkes Booth. Whenever you're ready. The bride, 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 disdainful inside is pouring right all your black boots tonight, and the sight of your lime and bean teeth could not frighten me back, 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 back. back. To the old yeah. I said yeah oh, oh, oh. I said yeah oh, oh, oh. Just like John Wilkes Booth, bring a tear to your eye and make Tom Wolf cry. Tears on his white suit and the bright, 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 bright disdainful inside is pouring right off of your black boots tonight. And the sight of your lima bean teeth could not frighten me. Bang, 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 bang to the old. Dressed up here yeah, today. Oh, no, this is how we normally go. Dressed up. Is it? Yeah. Is I it really? I'm not sure. What you're even like to. the Jay Mascus esque wig we got over here. Even even the dress we got over there. Mm. Well, we're in the Black Lodge right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we wear in the Black Lodge. Okay. Indeed. Great. Well, um, <laughs> I hear this band has an affinity for Halloween and spooky things. Uh, the eighth annual. Let me get this right. TJ Kong Halloween Costume Ball Rock and Roll Murder Show. Yes. Is there an acronym for that? Um, it's just the first letters of every word. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll work on that. Yeah. Um, goes down tomorrow night in Philly at Underground Arts. So it does. we are getting a bit of a preview of, of that, that spookiness here this today. This is a special preview of what dimension will be in at Underground Arts tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. What, pray tell, are some of your uh, best Halloween costumes of all time? I feel like my favorite one was when we were Jesus in the manger, and my good friend Joshua Matches here was baby Jesus, <laughs> uh, and he had made a manger out of a wicker basket, and he sat in the manger and played the bass. Wow. And, um, it was also the time I was closest to death, I feel like, in my life, because I made uh, a sheep costume out of uh, what I thought would be really easy and, um, and uh, fun to play in. It was a sweatsuit, and I glued a thousand cotton balls to it. 
Um, Precisely a thousand? It was it was in a thousand count bag. So I don't know how many I used. So but, yes, it was. So precisely a thousand. And it was precisely like a thousand degrees in the suit. And I didn't think about that as much. So I almost died and met Jesus in real life. What's he like? Um, I don't. He's smelly. I bet. Yeah. 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 Well, what is it about Halloween that, that speaks to you all as a band? Oof. Why, why do you do this ridiculous gig every year for almost a decade? It's just, ridiculous uh, in a loving way. In it's just the most life. fun day of the, of the calendar. Oh. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. A lot of the, there's like a big thespic feeling. Uh, thespic. Is that a word? Yeah. It is now. Today it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything can happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just a, it's the most fun day of the year. So why wouldn't we celebrate it? Fair. Yeah. Well, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're wearing today and why mm. you chose these? Well, today Fabulous we're showing threads. our affinity for the famous television series Twin Peaks. And um, it's a preview for what will be a larger, more theatrical version tomorrow at the show, um, where we'll be actually in the Black Lodge. Today we're just sort of showing our costume, uh, a little bit of our aura that tomorrow will engulf the entire party. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Can you, can you feel the aura? I can. Yeah. I can. Tell us about the next song you're going to play, Nat. So this song is a brand new song. Uh, it's off the new record. The last song was as well. But this song uh, we wrote um, specifically for the record in a sort of very quick um, and roundabout way. We were on the road, and we wrote it just in a sound check very quickly. Um, and it came together sort of like, uh, like it was meant to be. And the song is called Long Black Dress. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. 
Gracias. Awesome. Thanks, y'all. Sure. So since I grilled you about Halloween things, um, first, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about the new record, um, if you want. Um, it is not your first record. You guys have been doing this for a while, really, now. Um, what uh, stood out to you in the process of making this record? I think the biggest thing was the time constraint. We gave ourselves like a two-day window to record all the tunes uh, live to tape. And we wanted to do that to sort of give the proceedings and the feel, this energy that we had been missing in our other recording uh, projects. Um, and it was hectic, maybe, to say the least. And we were definitely putting the pressure on uh, Bill Moriarty, who produced the record with us, and, uh, and uh, the Quarry Sounds crew, who, uh, who helped immensely, to like, get all that done in two days. And that was like some of the most fun I think we've had in the studio together, is like that challenge, like facing that challenge and sort of meeting it, and the energy that was caught on tape was probably the most memorable part. Awesome. Yeah. One of the things um, that I've noticed is that uh, you can't really tell when when you're singing uh, if the stories you're singing about are like confessional or personal or if they're fiction. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about um, those characters and how you write like that. Sure. Well, it's all based um, in real experience. Okay. Um, so I would say most of it is confessional. There's definitely a little bit that's um, stories about other people. Uh, so not confessional for me, but for maybe scenes I was in. Um, but I think what we try to do in general is write from where we've been um, and create like movies basically on the inside of your head basically. So while you're listening, we want you to feel like you're watching and experiencing the stories that we've experienced. And so that's what we do. How do you think Philadelphia um, as a city, as a community, uh, factors into that? There are lots mm. of like stereotypes about, about that city in particular. Um, and of course, there are a ton of like local heroes there. Um, sure. And I don't know. I mean, I even think Springsteen in a way, just because, you know, he sings about, you know, anyway, it's not New Jersey, but he has Philly songs. I can see As Springsteen one example in Philly. Yeah, I mean, uh, I could see that. What's the... I'm, I'm blanking on the name because it's Friday after. Cheese Sticks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Streets of Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, yes. That song. Don't yeah, that's a great me, song. Facebook commenters. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're asking what does Philly yeah, do does... to these, like, stories that we tell? Yes. That well, it's very, uh, it's a very inspirational place. Um, Philly is very much sort of like a lawless place, I feel like. It's a place where you can go and be anything you sort of want to be. Um, you can manifest your own destiny in a way. These are very American tropes. It is. Well, Philly was the first it's capital. True. I mean, but more so than just like in a traditional American, like go out, start a business, you know, retire sort of way. Although you can do that in Philly very easily. People do it. Um, I find that the people who make art in Philly are afforded perhaps more free thought, free time, um, collaboration time. It's, uh, it's a place where it's not like New York or LA where you're really like hustling to just to live per se. Um, it's a place where it's a little bit more easygoing. And so people are free to like advance their art in ways that they wouldn't in New York or LA. So it's sort of lawless in that way and you can follow like whatever you'd want to. And I think that inspires more uh, free thinking art. Cool. And definitely inspires us and inspires the stories that we tell. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you've got one more for us today. Uh, tell I do. us about the last song. Uh, so this is called Mulholland Drive. It's and uh, it is also off Dancing Off the Dancing Out the Door. That's the name. Dancing <laughs> Off the Door. <laughs> That's the, uh, uh, that's the name in the Black Lodge. It's not dancing off the door in real life. It's dancing out the door. All right. Speaking of. Daniel. Yes, Tell me if you heard 
this one, a man is in the garden with a jar of gasoline. And the sun. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Um, TJ Kong, Halloween, Costume Ball, Rock and Roll, Murder Show takes place tomorrow at Underground Arts in Philadelphia. That's correct. And then you come back here to New York City. You play pianos on November 4th. Also got correct. got some other dates smattered across uh, the country and throughout the rest of the year. Um, all of those dates are online. The new album is called Dancing Out the Door, <laughs> out now uh, via Good Behavior Records. Thank you guys so much for being here with us today at Paste. TJ Thank you. Kong and the Atomic Bomb. Thank you.